Today we're going to show you how to create an acrostic, which is just a poem of a word in which you make other words out of the first letter of each of the letters in the original word. We will make an acrostic for each of your classmates. Um, and first off, we're going to start with PowerPoint. And to get to PowerPoint, we need to click on the Start menu. And if you can't find it readily, it's here. But I want to show you for those who might not have it on their desktop, you just type in PowerPoint. And as you type it in, it should bring it up. You just launch it or click on it. And you'll be brought into a, um, a single slide here. And it's in landscape format. And so I'm just going to jump to step number three here, where we want to select set this slide orientation to portrait. To do that, we need to click on the File menu, and then you want to click on Page Setup option. And then within the Page Setup screen, you want to click on, just under the slides, the slides to Portrait. So you want to make sure that that radio button is selected, and then you can press OK. Once you're in the slide, I want you to get rid of all these boxes. So you can just simply click on the edge of the box. And you can actually press Control A. This is what Step 4 is telling you to do. So Control A will select all those boxes, and then you press the Delete button on your on your keyboard. And once you do that, we have a fresh slate for us to start putting our text boxes. So in Step number 5, we're going to insert a couple of text boxes, each with the following. One is going to have the Bible verse and reference. And I give you a Bible verse in the assignment. And then you're going to put your grade level, your last name of your classmate or neighbor, and then made by your first and last name. So we know who made the acrostic. So start off, we're going to put in a text box. You just go to the Insert menu. And then you're going to click on Text Box. And then what it does is it changes kind of the cursor to this like arrow or upside down cross here and so you can click anywhere and it'll bring in a box to m let you start typing so I'm gonna start typing but which is the start of my verse and you can actually stretch out the box because it's gonna be kind of a longer verse here so you can just click the handle these are handles and you want to make sure that it looks like a bunch of dots in order to actually do the sizing and then right in here, you can just click the cursor and then continue typing. And now once we get the Bible verse typed, now we can do the second item, which is to put our grade level in. So I'm just going to click off of it so I can insert a new text box. And I'm just going to put my grade level over here. I'm going to pretend I'm in fifth grade. And then there I got my fifth grade. And then the next thing is we want the last name of our neighbor. Now I'm going to pretend that I'm doing one of these for Kirk Franklin, which is a recent thing we did with our searching project. So I'm going to click on Insert Text Box again. And I'm just going to go towards the bottom. I gave you a sample, or I showed a sample in class. So I'm just going to type in Franklin. And then I can actually move that text to wherever I want by simply clicking on the edge. You see this little cross here? You can click on the edge and it turns to all dots. Then you can just click and drag it anywhere you want. And then the next thing we're going to do is our, let's see, we want to put made by our first and last name. So I'm going to grab another text box. And I'm going to start typing that right here, made by, and I'm just going to put my name, Mrs. D. Decker. And I want to move it to just below Franklin there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do step six, where we're going to save our work. We want to save it to the network. So we're going to click on File, Save As. And once you get in the Save As screen, you want to drop this down. This is called a drop down. So you want to click this little triangle thing so that you can see all the different things that are on your um, computer. But you're looking for something that has like a PC ID. It would have either A01, B03, or whatever it is on your desktop. There should be a sticker. Mine is C07, so I'm going to click on it. And then once you click on it and it shows up here, you can actually see your grade level directory. 
So you want to look for your grade level. I'm going to pretend I'm in fifth grade, so I'm going to click on it and press open. And then um, I want to save it um, as this name by chance. Um, it won't be out there for you, but you will have to actually type this and you'll type in your last name, your first initial, in my case is M, and then I'm putting Franklin for the last name of the person I'm doing the acrostic for, and then their first initial dash acrostic. So you just need to type that in and then press save. And if you are saving for a second time or overlaying, you just simply click yes so that it overlays it so you get the most current version out there. And so the next thing, I'm going to do step 7 where I'm going to insert word art. Now right now I see the word art icon right here. It looks like a slanted A, but you might not actually have this toolbar on your um, toolbar. So the thing you want to do is you want to make sure you can um, that that's showing so you can right click anywhere where there's a blank spot out here and there's all sorts of toolbars you could add but you want to make sure that the word art one is checked as a matter of fact just to show you it actually goes away if you uncheck it so I'm going to right click and get it back so that it's checked and then I'm going to go ahead and select the icon for word art now for an acrostic, you usually want it vertical, so you'd like probably want to pick one of these. You can pick either of those, or you can simply like type the letters and hit carriage return in between and pick one of these. Now, technically, you want it in a straight kind of a thing so that it, it will be readable. So I'm going to pick this nice colorful one, and then I'm going to start typing in Kirk. So I actually have to put um, capital K, and you probably want all capital letters. I think it looks nicer. And then R. And then I'm going to click OK. And there I have Kirk. And I kind of want to make it bigger. So I just clicked and dragged it over. Because I'm going to have the acrostic kind of roughly around here. And to make it a little bit bigger, you can actually click on one of the handles. These are handles, those little circles. And you can kind of bring it down a little bit and make it bigger. You can actually... Um, hover over these handles here and then you can just click and drag it in. You have all kinds of options. Usually with a picture I typically want people to actually use like that corner icon so it keeps its aspect ratio or sizing. So I want to just bring that up there and then I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, number eight, where we're going to insert separate text boxes for each of the personality traits that you will be putting in there. So I'm going to insert another text box, and I'm just going to click right next to Kirk here, and I'm going to go look at my sheet. I can't show it up on the screen, but you should have a sheet that's called Positive Personality Adjectives. And on that adjective sheet, there's things that start with K and I and R and another K. Um, it's all alphabetized, so you just looking down the list, I see there's the word kind for the letter K. So I'm just going to type in kind. And then you can look up another one for I. Let's see, we have important. So I can insert another text box and put important. And remember, you don't want to put that first letter because the first letter is the actual letter of your acrostic. So here, you can click and drag those where you want. And now the next thing I want to show you is how you can insert clip art. So I'm just going to click on this, and we're going to insert a picture. So we're on the Insert menu again, Clip Art, and it brings up a pane. Let's say he likes basketball. So I typed in this search, so I'm going to press Go. And I think I want to bring in this basketball player. He's kind of colorful. So I want to actually get that where it kind of would look kind of nice. And you can size these pictures, actually. So you can click a corner. Always click a corner when you're dealing with, like, pictures. Because then that will keep the sizing so it looks proportionate. Otherwise, if you click over here, it's going to make it like that. And, oh... And if it gets ruined like that and you want it quickly back to its size, you just can press Control z or Undo. The Undo command is up here as well. So I can click 
those and then click undo and it'll be back to normal. So that's something to know too. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can change the font here. So I'm just simply selecting my text. You can select it from the front or the back. As long as it's selected, then you have the option of changing your font. The font is in this drop down. That should be showing. And say you want, I like kind of a, um, a papyrus here. So I'm going to type in papyrus for the Bible verse actually. I kind of like the papyrus look. So I'm going to just click and I can make it a little bit bigger. And there it is. It's all changed to that papyrus. Now let's say I want to change the color. Let's change the color of his last name. So I just simply select and if you look up on this formatting toolbar you'll see something with an A above it and if you hover over it you'll see this what's called bubble help and it's a little yellow box that tells you what it is. So you can just kind of hover your mouse over and find out what things are. So now I'm going to click and I think I kind of like this green. But let's say you wanted a different color. You could click on the more colors and then you get all sorts of colors here. Say I wanted this nice bright blue. So I'm going to click the blue and if you click off of it you'll see the color right there. So now um, pretty much we're pretty set. Um, I think that's all I wanted to show you um, and then we're just going to simply save the document so you just save here or you can save it by the third icon over you can click it right there and you'll be all done and then once you saved it you can click the X to get out and you should be all set